Hi guys, it is uh, January 3rd, 2019. Oh God, I can't believe I'm saying 2019. Um, I received a comment from a subscriber, I don't know, 10 days ago, asking me to watch Bird Box and then post a video sharing my thoughts about that movie. Not a movie that I would uh, just choose to watch on my own, but I did watch it and I will be talking about it. It is one of those movies that it's just highly contrived, though when you when you are very aware of what we have lived already, you know, you have to keep your mind open to, well, anything is possible. But before I get into that, I just want to show you some of what is happening in the world. Also want to um, tell you that there's a bird box challenge. Yes, it's kind of like that, um, the tide challenge when people were eating those tide packets or whatever. Oh my God. All right. So, uh, there are these people who become YouTube stars. 24 hour bird box challenge, 2,171,107 views. Wow. Okay. The bird box challenge is you're going to be walking around for 24 hours blindfolded. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, apparently this challenge um, took off and Netflix, because it was a Netflix movie, Bird Box, Netflix had to come out with a warning asking people, please don't hurt yourself. Please don't hurt yourself. It's really what our fellow human beings are doing with their lives. It's kind of scary. Um, yeah, the bird box. Okay. I'm going to be focusing on what happens when that shit hits the fan, that big thing that happens. If it happens, the uh, EMP uh, attack. Suddenly, you're without your creature comforts placed in a situation with, well, it could be strangers you know, needing to trust, needing to have an awful lot of information that I'm going to get into, an awful lot of knowledge that I don't think a lot of people think about. I do want to bring it to your attention, but I also want to bring to your attention what is taking place in our country. Warning for humanity, the madness is spreading by design as the masses are deliberately poisoned with toxic pharmaceuticals, pesticides, 5G wireless, hormone disruptors, toxic vaccines, and I'll add stress. Millions and millions are living now chronic stress. Many people are alcoholics, drug addicted, uh, nicotine addicted, what happens when that shit hits the fan and suddenly you find a whole lot of people going through withdrawal very soon after you have lost all your creature comforts? Oh, well, I don't think we're going to be facing, though I could very well be wrong it could be an economic collapse. It could be the grid being taken down. You know, I, I, it's not like I rule that out. But they have been so successful with this boiling frog scenario um, and so successful in keeping people kind of cornered in with limited information about what is taking place in the world. And when you kind of branch out and realize that madness really is, it is just manifesting all over every single day. Song ignites 200 person brawl 
at Virginia Skating Rink. And I want to thank my subscriber for sending this along to me. Wow. All right. Well, we've seen this take place throughout the years, right? But what has happened recently? This was po posted August 2018. Wild brawl at suburban children's restaurant caught on camera. Here, this. <laughs> Where was this? Connecticut. Mall Brawl. Connecticut. Um, Sand Hill Mall Brawl. This was June of last year. Hundreds of teens show up and they're in a brawl. We have video shows brawl between holiday shoppers at Avenues Mall. Uh, where exactly this is? I think Jacksonville. Uh, this was, yep, just a couple of weeks ago. We have this. Oh my god! What the fuck? And where was this? This was, uh... Walden Galleria Mall in New York, upstate New York. California Women's March canceled for being overwhelmingly white. I throw this in just to, as an example of groups being pitted against one another. And if you don't understand that this is a deliberate pitting to keep everybody, you know, fighting one another, um, then you may be someone who gets very angry over this. Uh, Antifa exposed angry white people with money. Here, a brawl. This was posted six hours ago. Hey, stop! Hard to even face this. Um, this started over a plastic straw ban. A woman went crazy on a McDonald's employee because ketchup. There wasn't enough ketchup on her hamburger. Is something happening to happening to our population? Yes. Yes. People are getting very angry and behaving in ways that, well, if we were living in a healthy society, they would not be behaving. Now, I do want to say that we can't rule anything out. No matter how contrived this movie is. And, uh, and if you want to watch this movie and not want to know what it's about, then click off my video now. Because I'm going to uh, talk about the details of this movie. Um, a force unknown descends upon nations. I, I think they start uh, in Eastern Europe. Sandra Bullock is the star of this movie, and this force has not hit the United States yet. And you know, in the very beginning, you just see ordinary life, right? What we're used to. And she goes to get an ultrasound, and she's with her sister, but uh, somewhere before you get to this point in the movie, they see on the news that something is happening in other countries that is making people spontaneously kill themselves. This force, if you look at it, if you see this force with your eyes, it 
immediately makes you suicidal and the force is so powerful that people start killing themselves. Okay, so the force got to the United States. They're in the car. Her sister is driving. They see people killing themselves, running in front of trucks, uh, causing head-on collisions. And then Sandra Bullock's sister sees the force. She swerves the car into uh, something I can't even remember. Um, and an accident, the sister dies. Sandra Bullock survives and then wanders the streets and everybody's running around trying to get away from this force to save themselves. Um, and I don't want to play any of this because I don't want a copyright strike. So this is Sandra. Okay, she is alive. She's out on the street running around. A woman in a house sees that she's pregnant, runs out of the house. John Malkovich is in this and he's a real prick in this movie and he's screaming at his wife to get back in, get back in. She doesn't. She wants to save Sandra. She's pregnant. The woman sees the force and she kills herself but Sandra is saved by another uh, person and they run up to this house and then you find that there are a whole lot of strangers coming into this man's house and now you have a group of people in a house and this force you have to close all of the windows cover all of the windows keep the doors closed otherwise the force will get in and that's the only way that you will survive inside outside you need to blindfold yourself. So this force clearly attacks people through the eyes and there are some human beings who are not killing themselves looking at this force. Those human beings believe this force to be beautiful. They become their enemy because they want those who are blindfolded or in homes that have windows covered up and doors uh, locked. They want them to see the force. They want to, them to see the force and then they end up killing themselves. So now you're stuck in a house. I, I do think that it's really important for everybody to imagine every possible scenario that you may find yourself in. Now this shit hits the fan that an awful lot of people talk about and are still talking about. Could we have an economic collapse where suddenly um, money is of no value? Absolutely. And a lot of people believe that that's coming. Could we have our grid taken out with an EMP, uh, an electromagnetic pulse? Absolutely. So suddenly, you are now living life as you have never known it. Life as you have known it is gone. When that happens, if it does happen that way, where will you be? Will you be in a store? Will you be at work? Will you be, um, I don't know, in an office, in a waiting room with an awful lot of strangers? Will you be home? Do you know your neighbors, your community members? Are you going to be forced in a situation where you are surrounded by strangers, they're all different from you, all different walks of life, white, black, Asian, gay, straight, young, old. And suddenly you are surrounded by strangers. Trust. That's when you get trust. Oh my God, trust. 
that thing that hardly anyone talks about, how important it is. Trust is the number one factor that will allow you to survive, allow this group to survive. And, well, another factor comes in handy, which I'll get to in a moment. So, you know, you go through this movie. Uh, well, this is how I watched it. Uh, just really trying to know, do I think a force is going to come along? If you look at it, you're going to kill yourself. Do I think, you know, that that is actually going to happen? No. Um, but what is happening here that is making so many people break out and into these violent brawls that are taking place? You know, we've seen movies, and I, I can't remember the names, but um, where a certain frequency of cell phones instantaneously is violence erupted and people killing one another. Can they do that with cell phones? Yes. Can they cause these brawls either with a song or a, because song, you, that, that's frequencies. Um, did they send a frequency to that uh, skating rink where you had an awful lot of people who were um, suddenly violent and fighting one another? This now is very easy to do. So are we seeing all of these brawls and a lot of what we have seen throughout the years, because I've posted on these brawls on Kafka Winston World, young people suddenly erupting. Hundreds are fighting one another. Are we seeing these young groups attacked with sonic weapons? That may be the case. Um, but if you are suddenly in the middle of these brawls, you're going to think of, uh, you, you, you really want to be very savvy, and you want to pull yourself from it. You don't want to get inflamed and angry and start throwing punches. And I do believe that those people who see it for what it is and pull themselves away are those people who have some awareness of themselves um, and who are capable of recognizing that, well, whether you're capable of recognizing that it is been induced or not, if you have some degree of help, you will pull yourself away from it. Um, but what if you can't get away from some force? What if you can't get away from frequencies? You're the one who's not using a cell phone and suddenly all of the people who are addicted to their cell phones, staring at it, suddenly become violent and you're only left with those who are not using a cell phone. That group then becomes the survival group and you may not know them. So um, it's actually interesting to watch this movie for that reason alone. And what also you know takes place is you have um, you have this group. They're strangers. They're trying to survive this. You have people who are, and, and initially, I think it's like five or six people in this group who are trying to survive in this house. But then people come to the door and they're knocking on the door right here. And they're crying and screaming and begging to come in. But there's a group of humans that can see this force and not kill themselves but they want others. They're starting to attack the people who are blindfolded or in homes. You know, they want to get in and 
uh, you know, draw the drapes open of the windows and open the doors, get this force in, which will then kill the people who are trying to survive. But then there are some people who are banging on the door, begging to come in, who are just like those in the group trying to survive. How do you know who to trust? Do you have the capability of discerning based on what, based on the tone you hear, based on what people are saying? Are you capable of either not opening the door because you don't trust them, which you'll see, you know, one of the women who were allowed in by the group, they determining she was trustworthy. Um, and then some people don't, you know, they really want that door closed, like John Malkovich, you know, who is the one with the shotgun, and he is continually, um, well, he says in the movie, there are two people, there are two kinds of people in the world, assholes and the dead. Um, he doesn't trust anyone, and... It's interesting because, you know, everybody is like, oh, God, you know, they don't like John. And, um, but on one occasion where others trusted the person to come in, the guy that didn't trust John Malkovich, he was actually right not to trust that person. But they do let someone in. And she is just like them trying to survive. But she's one of those soft, sensitive types. And she hears somebody else begging to come in. And she opens the door and allows this guy in. And the shotgun is pointed at this guy who's been let in. And they're all trying to determine whether or not uh, this guy is uh, trustworthy. John Malkovich is the one who says, no, you can't trust this guy. And then they all uh, jump on John. They get his gun away. They throw him into the garage and lock him in there because he wants to get rid of that guy. He wants to shoot him. And it turns out that John Malkovich was right. But so here you are in a group you're all trying to survive. And there's got to be consensus among you. And if there isn't, then the one person who doesn't go along with the group could be a real danger to the group. Like that woman who let in a guy that turned out not to be trustworthy because she was going on emotion. Um, trust becomes the number one factor. And if you don't have it, the group doesn't survive. So you see, um, they're in this house for a while. They run out of food and, but they can't go outside. They're not going to get to a supermarket unless... They're all blindfolded. How do you get to a supermarket blindfolded? Well, they learn that there's a car in the garage and they get to the supermarket because this guy works at the supermarket and he has the address and they do it via the GPS. They're all blindfolded in the car once they get outside and the GPS takes them to the supermarket. They get into the supermarket and then suddenly... Uh, they hear in the back of the supermarket someone banging on the door, screaming to get in. And the guy who works in the supermarket, who's with them, knows the guy. And they're all discussing, discussing whether or not to let him in. The guy who works in the supermarket says, well, he's off, but, you know, he's not, he's not dangerous. And uh, somebody opens the door, He, th this guy does come in, and it turns out he's one of them who can look at the force and not kill himself, so they have to get him back outside, 
and a fight ensues. Well, who then finally, you can see, and this is the birds, the birds in the box, which I'll get to in a second, but the this kid who works in the supermarket makes the quick decision. He realizes that, and you can see it just in the expressions on his face. He's making that quick decision. If I run and push with all my might, that guy back out the door, the group will be saved. And he goes and he pushes the guy, but he's got to push him with a force that makes the guy who pushes him, he's now outside, so he's dead. But he does it to save the group. Can you do that? Will you do that? These are questions that you really have to ask yourself. So, what happens? All right, they get back in the car. Um, they're blindfolded. Sandra Bullock in this supermarket sees birds in a cage, but she sees the birds are reacting to the force. She brings the birds back to the house. The birds become crucial in her survival because the birds end up at the very end when she is on a river trying to save, you know, Sandra's pregnant and that other woman they let in was pregnant and they both had the children. They're in the house for five years trying to survive while more and more are being killed off. And, but because when they were in the house and there was a two-way radio, uh, Sandra Bullock was uh, periodically going over to that two-way radio just saying hello hello anybody out there and finally somebody answered and a man gave uh, I guess the location where he was at um, but of course how do you trust that person if they go and they happen to be somebody who can look at the force and not kill themselves, but they end up killing them. Yeah, trust is a big factor. Um, but at the end, she has no choice. She's got to find, because now she's alone, and she has the two kids. So she's got to find them to survive this. So she's on the river with a boat. You know, all of this is very highly, highly contrived, and you know that if you were on a boat with these kids, you would not make it. All right, but they eventually get into a forest. They still have the birds. The birds are crucial to their survival because when that force starts to come, they don't see it or hear it, but the birds do, and the birds react, and the birds allow them uh, to know the direction they need to move in. All right. Um, two things that I got from this. Trust is absolutely essential. Your connection with nature is absolutely essential. Now, will you find yourself in this particular scenario? Well, it may not be a force that is coming at you, and the only way you know is that you have these birds who beginning who are beginning to react, you know, to this force. You know, it's like animals that sense a tsunami coming and they start heading for the hills. Well, if you don't have any connection to nature, animals, birds, if you can't you know, uh, understand their communication, you won't make it if you're in this kind of scenario. And there's, uh, there are an awful lot of people who have no connection to nature whatsoever. 
and they could see, you know, a flock of geese in the sky, you know, they migrating with that perfect V form, and then suddenly those geese go wild, crashing into one another, um, flying all over the place. And if you're not connected, if you don't recognize that those geese suddenly became so chaotic. Why? Because there was danger. They were sensing something. And very often, it's they have flown into uh, a, a frequency that has caused that chaos. But a, an awful lot of people who just are so clueless won't even recognize it or see it and won't be able to discern danger. It's the people who are connected that will be able to survive longer. The trust, you know, I have been saying for the entire time I've been on YouTube, people have to stop lying. So when you think about that shit hits the fan and it could very well just go on and on the boiling frog scenario, pushing more and more and more people off the edge. Um, it may not be that you know, volcano at Yellowstone erupting, or it may not be um, the Hoover Dam collapsing and states taken out. It may be an acceleration of areas targeted with huge numbers taken out, like Paradise, California, 14,000 plus homes. And when you're in that situation, when you have experienced being taken out, you will know that trust is vital. You will understand all of what you took for granted, never even thought about when you were living as life, you know, uh, nothing has jarred you uh, out of your, the life that you have known. When something happens and suddenly you are in a whole different life. Everything's unfamiliar. Your creature comforts are gone. Life then uh, presents for you survival like you've never experienced. And probably once the panic and the, the uh, okay, you know, we've got to get it together. We've got to figure out how to survive. And once people stop, you know, yelling at one another and pointing shotguns at one another and, you know, fighting with one another and judging one another and all the shit that happens when people are stressed. Once that starts to simmer down, you get a little bit of trust in one another. And there are moments of calm. You might start thinking about everything you took for granted that sustained your life. And you'll begin to understand all of the factors that you never even thought about because, well, it was just this automatic thing. I mean, it was just available to you always. You did take it for granted. You never thought about it. And then suddenly, you've lost everything. That's when you begin thinking differently. That's when you begin recognizing, wow, so much sustains life. Jarred out of that familiarity and that comfort, a lot of people talk about, mm, well, how do you 
start a fire to cook food without matches? Or uh, how do you filter water from a river? And But I don't hear a lot of people talking about all of the things that you take for granted. You know, you who are still comfortable. Trust. Can you discern someone who's trustworthy? Can you understand the ego-driven personality, that low level of consciousness that unfortunately, is among most people, and those are the people that you can't trust. Now, I'm talking about, oh, you may be able to trust them in terms of they knowing how to filter water, they knowing how to uh, start a fire without matches. But the Living survival, it causes stress. And when people are, well, under acute stress, you know, because, oh my God, you know, people are killing themselves or people are killing others or we will power outage and you're not going to have it. And you are panicked and stressed. And within that moment, an awful lot of people lose it. But the chronic stress of living survival every single day causes regression in people. A regression that they start acting out, they start exhibiting behaviors that are coming from those personal issues that we've acquired during our childhood. We grow up as adults most people never take a look at those issues and think that, hey, I should really resolve a lot of what I was handed in my childhood. They don't do that. So it's within them and it's in their subconscious. They're not aware of them. You know, just as an example, um, people who were uh, abused physically or um, neglected, abandoned, um, people who had parents that used shame as a tactic to um, discipline or punish or oh, I want that child acting the way I want that child to be acting, and they use shame to do it. So you grow up to be an adult with all of these kinds of issues. You grow up to be an adult that is needing approval. You grow up with those issues that you're not aware of, if you've been shamed in a way, certainly if it was traumatizing, you'll be an adult who will do everything to avoid ever being shamed. That means that you've got a go along to get along person. That means you have someone who is um, who has been so motivated to not be their authentic self. So they're living a pretense. They've got that mask on and they are going along to get along within their social network, too afraid to speak their own opinion, too afraid to show the individual that they are. And that in itself causes an awful lot within that individual that they may not even be aware of. And when you're not aware of those issues, they so motivate your behavior. And you may have been that adult who has been behaving in a way that you know that people want you to behave. So that's how you behave. But when the shit hits the fan and you're so stressed, that anger comes out. 
um, if you have a propensity for violence, that violence will come out. A whole lot goes on in the psyche that a not too many people are talking about. Think of think of all of the people who are narcissistic, psychopathic. The pathological, you want out of your group. But how do you get them out of your group if you're not aware of the characteristics of that narcissist and psychopath? Um, but there's an awful lot of people now who are not pathological, but wow, do they have those narcissistic psychopathic tendencies. Very often they will be concealing them because they know that it's wrong to behave in a narcissistic psychopathic way. But when stressed, you're going to see those tendencies come out. Think of all of the people who are on medications. You have an EMP attack, an economic collapse, the money, money, the dollar is worthless. And you have so many people on psychiatric medications. And they can't get those medications. And the withdrawal is horrendous. Think of all of the people who are alcoholics, drug addicts, um, addicted to nicotine. Whatever the addiction is, you're going to see people going through withdrawal, not immediately, but really soon after the shit hits the fan. If you're someone who does not understand any of what I'm talking about, if you do not know the characteristics of the narcissist, the psychopath, um, if you don't have a, a basis of knowledge in psychology, the psyche, consciousness, um, if you don't understand the withdrawal of whether it's pharmaceutical drugs or street drugs, then you're not going to be somebody who will be the person who's able to calm, calm the group or calm the individual who loses it if you can't understand what they're going through, you're more likely to be somebody who will react to it and only inflame the situation. If you have a basis of understanding of psychology, psyche, withdrawal symptoms, if you have an ability to read body language, facial expressions, hear tone, inflection, and your, your awareness allows you to hear the subtle differences in people, you will be someone who will be very important to the group because you'll be able to use your ability to discern something going on with that individual. You'll be able, you'll be better able to discern who is trustworthy and who is not. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people who, well, clearly they have a great act. Now, it might not be an act to them. It's just how they have operated in life. But it is an act. It's that mask. It's the living a pretense. It's having been raised in such a way that you don't want to disclose who you really are because people won't like you. You'll be unloved. Um, so you wear that mask. Most people don't even know that that's how they live. But that's going to cause an awful lot of problems within the group trying to survive.
there's an awful lot more to survival than just shelter, food, water. So what I got out of Bird Box, the most important aspects of this highly contrived and no, not a movie uh, that would be on my list to watch if it weren't for that subscriber asking me to watch it. Um, trust and your connection with yourself and nature. Why have I gotten very upset when people have lied to me? Uh, lied about me when I see an awful lot of discord erupting in this community people lying in this community people clearly not working on themselves to lift themselves up to right their wrong thinking they unaware of these presumptions that they make about people and they communicate them back as fact. Well, if you're stuck with somebody in that community that you find yourself in trying to survive, this person who doesn't understand the presumptions that they make will be a detriment to the group. Because those presumptions that they're not able to catch about people, they'll be making it about people in the group. And suddenly you're losing time because you're fighting with one another over some person. You'll see a lot of that taking place in Bird Box. Um, if you cannot be honest, and I swear I, I know this because, you know, I, it's amazing to me that those who are still at that low level of consciousness, who have no awareness of themselves, they will lie in front of you unaware that you know that they're lying because you know them. It's like a profound lack of awareness. And the only way that you can get honest is to admit that you've lied. And then look at why you need to lie, resolve the need, so that you can be an honest human being in the world. If you can't do that, then you will be forever untrustworthy. And you will be about yourself. So when you have... When you're in that moment of, do I open the door? Um, you have to be thinking about the group survival. The door then opens and someone comes in who is, you've got to get them back out. Are you someone who only thinks about yourself? Or are you someone who can just go for it and save the group? Now, you may answer those questions very quickly right now. Oh, I would be that person. Really? Okay. You won't know. And you can't absolutely guarantee it until that moment arises because it's easy to think about, well, if this happens, yeah. And I've seen a lot of people who are leaving comments. I've, I've, I've read those comments for seven years. You know, the, the, the people who talk big, but you have no idea how they will respond when confronted with that scenario that is only imagined. Who can you trust?
you can only trust the people who don't lie to you and who you have actually seen in real life walk the talk, who live their principles, who don't lie, who are serious in life in terms of their relationships, their friendships, their their, uh, their <clears throat> intimate relationships, their families. They're serious. They take those relationships seriously. They feel an obligation and a responsibility to those who are in their life. And they understand what lying would do. So they don't. What's more important to them is the relationship, not their own self. You know, the, the people lie for many reasons. Um, that the relationship and the trust within the relationship becomes the most important thing. So they're capable of having that, that they have that courage to not lie even if it means they're going to be shamed, they're going to be abandoned, uh, they're not going to be able to get what they want because a lot of people lie because they have an agenda and they want to get something and they know if they tell the truth they're not going to get it what is most important is the relationship. Those are the people, when you see them demonstrate that behavior, you know that they can trust, they can be trustworthy. You can trust them. And those are the people who, because they're not about themselves, are more likely to die for the group, for the group to survive. So there's an awful lot to learn regarding survival. It's not just about food, water, and um, shelter. The people around you. And unfortunately now, um, we have so many people who are living life as they have known it, but it's stressful now because well, they're living paycheck to paycheck and they're living the chronic stress. Oh, and those frequencies are causing chronic stress within, that's the biological response of this Wi-Fi world. So now what we're finding is an awful lot of people that will not be capable of surviving any kind of you know, uh, event like an economic collapse or because they've been too worn down already. And uh, there are a lot of people who are so messed up within themselves that they're going to bring more problems to the group than they will the trust that is really needed. Now, um, I know that I've gone on. I don't see very many people posting videos on how crucial it is to understand, to have some basis of knowledge of withdrawal symptoms, um, have some basis of knowledge of those personal issues that people have just never dealt with, um, the ego-driven individual, the narcissist, the psychopaths, because if you don't have any knowledge, you will not know what you are suddenly facing. And the response generally is 
a reaction to that which only will inflame the situation, not calm it down. Yeah, it's really, really important to think of all the scenarios that you may that you may find yourself in. You know? And how are you going to deal with it? And how are you going to be an asset to the group and not a detriment? Because if you're bringing a pile of your own personal issues unresolved, if you're bringing your narcissistic, you know, uh, psychopathic tendency to the group, if you're bringing your ego-driven self, you're not going to be able to survive. You're not going to be someone who's an asset. Um, you also have to understand what stress does to people. Acute stress brought on, you know, in a in a in a way that is so jarring, well, that causes an awful lot of people to respond with this panic uh, hysteria. Chronic stress leads to a regression. So if you don't understand that, then you can't understand what is really happening to the individual. And you won't be able to attend to it, to meet it, as it needs to be met. I hope, I hope what I've said is, you know, that people understand what I'm talking about. Um, you know, in this group, when they finally get back from that supermarket, the two young, you know, this young guy and young woman end up stealing the car. They end up stealing the car. So that means that how they're going to be getting food and more supplies, the two young kids taking the car left this crew with a much harder task in front of them to get the supplies. Are you capable of doing that? You need to answer honestly in order to resolve that um, aspect of you. Please understand, we all have evil and good in us, and unfortunately a lot of people, the go-along get-alongs are those who have already sold their soul and don't have much of a moral core. That is pretty much the majority of our country. And when you find yourself in a stressful situation, you will find that most people are capable of doing things that they would never have done, but capable on the wrong side. I, in Great Barrington, before I well, 2011-2012, I was posting videos on the importance of really getting yourself in good shape. And no, that doesn't just mean physically. It means morally. It means psychically. It means emotionally. It means mentally. It means a lot of work. And yes, we do now face a time that is extremely demanding of us. The laziness, the uh, that's got to go. And complacency, got to go. 
even if you're someone who believes, you know, like um, Christians who believe that this is prophesized, you still need to do the work because when your community goes down, and it could very well, due to flooding or due to your home gone, brought to dust, uh, and that is accelerating. You need to be instrumental. You need to be that individual who is capable of dealing with a lot. If you still are alive. If you haven't thought about all of these different scenarios and how you will be in them and even if you know there are I've gotten the comments you know people who are happy that all of this is taking place because they know that Jesus is coming the end is near and all of what we are seeing for them it's yet another indication that Jesus is coming. Okay, well, if you are left in this kind of scenario and Jesus ain't here yet, I hope that you are someone who has thought beyond yourself, thought beyond that happiness that you have, um, and recognized, okay, Jesus may not be here, but I will, may be stuck in a situation like this how am I going to be in that situation? And what, what? Will I be an asset? Will I be a detriment? How will I be an asset? And thinking about all of the details. The ego-driven personalities. Well, I don't want to say personality because everybody has it. Um, yeah, we, we, the low level of consciousness. Those who are about themselves, they don't think like that, but they are like that. That's what they demonstrate in life. Um, oh, they, you know, they may be doing good things, and um, but it's about them. They needing the praise for the work that they're doing, the approval the accolades, the kudos. It's about themselves. So, brought into this situation with that low level of consciousness, they're not going to be the ones who save the group. And they're they may very well be so much about themselves that they cause an awful lot of trouble in the group. They may be the one that is continually bringing disharmony to the harmony that is so crucial in surviving. Yeah, there's an awful lot to think about. You know, you want the people who you have seen in your community live the principles that they speak, who are not afraid to speak their own truth and be honest. You want the people who don't lie because they are the most healthy. All right. I'll link below to all of the brawl articles and everything, but yeah, uh, you really do need to think and seriously consider every possible scenario. It's in your face, guys. Things are not good. And even those who, you know, still leave me comments, you know, people upset. The video that I posted late last night, and at the end I mentioned Trump's tweet. 
calm down and enjoy the ride. And people were, well, I really liked your video up until you started trashing Trump. Okay. Um, We sure do need to understand that people have different opinions and we don't need to trash them for their opinion. Um, when their opinion is so far away from evidence, facts, and the truth, my gut tells me that that is someone who really needs delusion that they do have difficulty with reality um, and that may be somebody who may not know how to work harmoniously with others if those others are from different backgrounds, they have different skin color, they're young or old, gay, straight, Asian, whatever. But whether you think the economy is good or not, what we have been seeing over the years is more and more and more dying off, having their lives destroyed, and it's not stopping. So there are so many assaults coming at us, and more and more people are going insane and showing how they do not have a moral core. Unfortunately, a lot of what I just talked about really takes years. <laughs> you know, for that individual, it takes a lot of work, a lot of self-reflection, a lot of reevaluation, a lot of serious, deep thinking, and a whole lot of courage to just get honest with yourself. Most people are not there. So they have kind of moved us along decade after decade, year after year after year of just living uh, with an awful lot of assaults upon us physically that has worn us down, assaults on us mentally, you know, the social engineering, and a lot of psyops. So the condition of the American people gets worse and worse. So if you are, yeah, and uh, look, you know, I will tell you straight out, when I left Great Barrington in 2012 and found myself homeless living in my car, having to rely on subscribers, I learned that within this community, there's a whole lot of people who are screwed up, messed up, um, they lie, and couldn't find one person I could trust. So when you think in those terms of your own experience, you can branch that experience outward because you're not living something so profoundly unique. It, it just represents, it's like a, a, a micro representation of the macro. 
and then you get to see what's out there. So, be honest. That is the first order of business. Be honest. Be honest. Don't lie. Do not lie. And if you do, come right back and take responsibility. And don't do the insincere, insincere, sorry, I'm sorry. Do the sincere apology. Make an amends, which means that you're not only saying, I'm sorry, but you're also saying, I'm going to work on myself to make sure it never happens again. If you have caused distrust within any relationship of yours, work. Work to get that trust back. Very hard. We all know that <laughs> it takes a long time to build trust and an instant to destroy it. And once destroyed, very hard to reestablish it. The only way you can reestablish it is by never lying again, taking responsibility for it, and having the humility, I guess, to go about never doing it again. I will tell you my experience with the comfortable. They don't even think about these things. They don't take trust seriously. And they're still, they still have that psyche where people are really nothing. They can be discarded, discarded because there's more people out there. Well, I do want to say that you really do get to see what's truly important when you have lost everything. Anyway, I'll link below. A lot of Americans have not faced this circumstance in particular, but a whole lot of Americans have faced life destroyed. So when you're looking at this, all of these people in this car, don't look at them as if they're actors Look at them as your fellow Americans. And they're living it as I speak. Not knowing where to turn, who to trust, how to get their life back. Familiarity, comfort, all things known, gone. Never did they think it would come to them, and it came to them. So please... Don't be foolish and think it's not coming to you. Take, take life now really seriously. Trust is everything. It is everything. And without trust, you have nothing. You have nothing solid, no foundation, nothing to work with. You have more and more insanity. And that's what we're living. So,
Yeah. All links are below.